very fruity. Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. I'm the master taste of whiskey.com and today we have a special independent bottle here in my cask. It's a Glen Grant from Signatory Vintage and this bottle was filled from only two casks. Two ex-bourbon barrels with the cask numbers 88,119 and 120. So you see by this extremely long cask numbers that Glen Grant is a huge distillery filling a lot of casks and in former times they sold those casks also to well independent bottlers as well as into the blend industry and Glen Grant was part of the mm, the Chivers and Glen Livet group I think and they produced whiskey also for the Chivers Regal. Um, then it was sold to Campari, probably, yes, I think so. Um, today uh, there are bottles from Glen Grant on the market, single malt whiskies, a lot of them. In Central Europe I think it's the number two on the market um, in single malt whiskey, but without an age statement. And this independent uh, bottle uh, comes from casks which were bought in former times and matured at the independent bottler, in this case signatory vintage, for well a period that they thought is best, not the distillery. So they had to move those casks out of the distillery, store them in their own place and I think signatory vintage in 1995 they were still in, in Edinburgh with their uh, duty-free warehouse where they further matured those casks and uh, well this bottle is 19 years old and if you have a closer look to the data on the label it says 19 years old and distilled on May 31st 1995 and bottled April 16th 2015 so just six weeks if they had waited six years uh, six weeks they could have added a year to the age of the whiskey. Why haven't they done that? Well, these bottles are well quite often asked for and uh, if you wait and have no supplies for the dealers until this whiskey becomes 20 years old and then you can uh, ask for a, for a euro or a dollar more, um, uh, this harms more than to give a steady supply of these bottles into the market. This is natural color, but it's chill filtered. It's 43% ABV and it's a mixture of two casks, as I said, and this two mixture of those two casks result in a, well, more common taste. Uh, a single cask may have, well, some strange, some weird aromas, uh, age too strong, age too weak, uh, and a mixture of two, well, just harmonizes it a little bit. A mixture of three will bring more harmonization and if you uh, mix a uh, hundred then you reach the original bottling, uh, which is done in quite huge uh, batches. So this one is just two, bottle, uh, two casks and uh, this is bottle number 480. Um, and in former times there were the uh, maximum number of bottles uh, added to the label and uh, they stopped that. Well, <clears throat> So this is no collector's item, this is a whiskey to, to savor and uh, so the exact data how many bottles are on the market and so on is, is not that important. Uh, 20 years in a bourbon barrel um, typically result in uh, 250 bottles. So, yeah. So 480 should be the last, or is this bottle number 480? It's not the highest bottle number, or is the bottle number the maximum amount of bottles? Probably, otherwise it would be one of the very last filled from the cask. <clears throat> very fruity. It's a, a typical 
space-side fruitiness, but not that young fruitiness of apples and pears, but more mature, sweeter, older. Oranges, sweet oranges, juicy oranges. Peaches, nectarines, probably. Yeah, <clears throat> and some caramel, distant vanilla, and a faint oh, spiciness of oak. So it's in, no, not spiciness, it's oakiness, showing that there is uh, oak in the whiskey. Still sweet and fruity. Mm -hmm. Impact, strong, full, spiciness, the oak, but also still a little sweet, still fruity. And in the back, some chocolate coming up, but not this dark, bitter chocolate, uh, some milk chocolate. More friendly, but oh goodness, yeah, oak. So this is a a wonderful space cider, and uh, it has the the power and the intensity uh, one would suggest every space cider should have, and uh, the small number of casks, the selection of casks, uh, and the waiting for 19 years, or close to 20 years, before filling results in a complex, intense, full Speyside whiskey. Most of the Glen Grant is bottled after three years and spread into the market, cheap money. This one is a little bit more expensive, it's 50 euros. And uh, you have to look around to, to get a 19 year old whiskey for 50 euros. So it, Prices for the original bottlings with the higher age statement are rising or have risen steeply. And here with this independent bottle, there's still a lot of value for the money. Yeah. smooth on the tongue, little spiciness, no alcoholic sharpness. And there are different series of uh, bottles from the independent bottler uh, signature vintage. There are these in the two colored uh, tubes, the copper bottom and the, well, the sand colored top. Um, they are always chill filtered and bottled with 43% ABV. And there are these silvery shining um, bottles which have 46% ABV and are unchill filtered. And uh, among those bottles, which are quite often uh, less rated because of their chill filtration, of their uh, weak alcoholic content, uh, they say, well, it can't be that good. I found very, very often really good old whiskies for affordable money. So this is hidden secrets, hidden gems of the industry. Wonderful and still affordable. A really, really good one. Thank you for watching. There's more to come. Stay tuned and feel free to ask your questions on whiskey.com and uh, please do not ask those questions here on YouTube. Uh, I'll try to answer all those questions in our vlog on whiskey.com. Thank you very much for